are you the Oklahoma City bomber? Maybe one of the benefits of me talking to you today is that you'll see that maybe not everything is true that you've heard about me. On the morning of April 19, 1995, a decorated Gulf War combat vet blew up the federal building in Oklahoma City using a truck bomb that he didn't build and a rider truck that he didn't rent with the help of a passenger who didn't exist. Having just gotten away with the largest act of terrorism on U.S. soil to date, the Fort Bragg trained Special Forces sheep drip dropout blended in with the crowd by making his getaway in a car without a license plate and was immediately pulled over. The ATF was the supposed target of the attack, but luckily all of their agents were out of the office that morning. Later that day, the president boldly declared, We will find the people who did this. And when we do, justice will be swift, certain, and severe. Except for John Doe number two. John Doe number two. John Doe number two. Who, according to the FBI, never existed. In McVeigh's unprecedented three and a half week trial, the prosecution didn't show the CCTV footage of him and John Doe number two parking the rider truck. Didn't explain why 24 separate witnesses mass hallucinated the existence of John Doe number two didn't explain why the government was testing truck bombs and the army was storing rider trucks at Camp Gruber right before the bombing, and didn't talk to the FBI informants who blew the whistle on the plot. But they did collaborate with the CIA, and they did convict McVeigh as the lone wolf bomber and Terry Nichols as his bomb-constructing accomplice. Still, a bunch of crazy conspiracy theorists, including 300 bombing victims, insist on talking about facts and evidence and refuse to simply believe what they've been told a million times by people in tailored suits with well-coiffed hair. They quote the U.S. Army Brigadier General and the FBI Crime Lab whistleblower and the inventor of the neutron bomb who point out the physical impossibility that the Ryder truck bomb did the damage to the building, but that doesn't matter because if there were other bombs in the building that day, we would have heard about them. The second explosive was found and diffused. I think he said another bomb. The Justice Department is reporting that a second explosive device has been found. They then found a third device, which was also larger than the first. And I see another bomb truck going, so apparently they're going to try to get out that third bomb. The FBI claims to have lost the footage showing McVeigh and John Doe number 2 parking the truck in front of the Murrah building that morning, but that's understandable because the Bureau has a lot of important evidence to store. Terry Nichols insists the FBI was involved in the plot, but thankfully a judge has saved us the trouble of listening to him by preventing lawyers from deposing him. There was a bomb squad truck parked across the street two hours before the blast, but that just shows the authorities were prepared for anything. And... Other documents obtained by 2020 show that someone called the executive secretariat's office at the Justice Department in Washington and said the Morrow building had been bombed. But this was 24 minutes before the blast. But that just shows the public was unusually vigilant that morning. Also, apparently, before the bombing, Governor Frank Keating's brother, Mark, had been working on a novel about a terrorist bombing in Oklahoma City. Stranger still, one of the characters in the novel was named Thomas McVeigh. But that's probably just a coincidence. McVeigh wrote a letter to his sister where he admitted to being a secret Special Forces operative and he complained to friends of the pain in his ass from an army implanted microchip, but that's crazy because if he didn't actually leave the army in 1991, there would be proof of that. McVeigh was not executed on May 16, 2001 as scheduled because... The FBI had failed to turn over thousands of pages of evidence to McVeigh's defense attorneys. But the execution went ahead on June 11th. In a highly unusual and secret agreement, no autopsy was performed. One witness said he was still breathing, and the prison officials admitted his hearse was a decoy. Then, the case was officially closed. And if you question any part of this story, you are a paranoid, wingnut, birther, truther, tenther, prepper, conspiracy loon who'd bring up any of these points ever again. Ever. This message has been brought to you by the friends of the FBI, ATF, DOJ, CIA, SPLC, NSM, and the U.S. Army. And remember... Ignorance is strength.